in a fight against cancers, there seems to be one particular type that is uh, not as much talked about as um, breast cancer and cervical cancer as we know. That is prostate cancer and it usually uh, occurs in men. I'm here with some men for a little insight into what prostate is, what they know about it, have they been checked and what rumors are there so that uh, later on uh, specialists can give us deeper insight and the right education into what prostate cancer really is. Gentlemen, how are you feeling this afternoon? Let's start with a simple question. Have you been checked for prostate cancer before? Oh, for me, no. I've never been checked before. Me too. The same thing. No. But do you know what prostate cancer is? Or prostate? Do you know what it is about? What, do you know anything about prostate? Well, I've heard about prostate cancer and what it does, it weakens the man's um, private part, excuse my language, but I don't know anything else. Okay, I learned when you keep urine a lot um, and you don't probably, when you take in water and you go to bed and you don't um, wake up early to probably pee, yeah. it also has um, an effect and it can also cause the prostate cancer. That's what I heard. That's a little I heard about it. But I don't know anything about it, but I, I, I be hearing people saying about it that, that uh, if you drink more alcohol, and at the end of your time, you may get it. What I heard is that it's an only a man disease. So sometimes we do that when you keep chewing for a long time, you can suffer prostate cancer. Well, uh, what I know about prostate is uh, I know it's an organ. It's within men. And then, when you get to certain stage, and you don't check it, mm -hmm. it develops and then give you a problem. Some of the problems are you renew it continuously. Uh, it will enlarge your uh, what do you call your tussle. Okay. This is what I know about it. Do you know of any meals that when we eat, when men eat, can improve their prostate or prevent prostate cancer? Okay. Well, uh, according to uh, some medical doctors, the food that if you eat, it can protect your prostate is uh, well, uh, what do you call Garlic is one. Tomatoes, onion, and then veg some uh, some vegetables. Hello there, welcome back. Now this is a conversation that I am passionate about, and one that you should be passionate about too. Whether you are female, male, okay? Because your husband, your boyfriend, your brother, your grandfather, your father, uh, whatever, are all involved. They all have one thing called a prostate. Right now, the prostate, like the medical people will tell you, is like a walnut, very small, as part of your reproductive system. And it is crucial as well because even when you produce semen, uh, it's not just the sperm, that is what also produces that, that fluid that also your sperm can feed on and stay alive for reproduction to take place. So it's crucial to us. But we're asking today, as we discuss diets and nutrition, do you know the state of your prostate? When last did you check, screen, find out what is happening with your prostate? And what are some of the things you should eat to make your prostate stay healthy? And maybe things you should avoid so that they don't get unhealthy. Well, joining us in the studio, you loved the first installment. We're bringing you this installment this Friday as we discuss Prostates and Health with Registered Dietitian Fozia Abdulrahman. Uh, if I had a drum, I would do a drum roll for you because the last time it was really good. Thank you, Fozia, for joining us once more. So the last time we were talking about health and the kidney and everything. Today we are focusing on the prostate. The prostate. We're a bit biased. Yenso, Yenso, we have to talk about ourselves. Yeah. Uh -huh. Tell us a bit about the prostate, just to lay the foundation yeah, so for So like you just said, the prostate is just about the size of a walnut. 
just small and it, it increases in size as you age and is responsible for producing what we call the semen. Uh, in Ghana, or should I say worldwide, uh, is the second largest, is the second leading cause of death among men. And, hey, uh, yes. hey, I didn't know that. Please backtrack, backtrack, come back. So it's the second leading cause of cancer deaths. Cancer death yeah, cancer among, death men. among men. So of the cancers that men can get, prostate second. cancer yeah. is number two. Yeah, it's number two. Hey. And it's very common among black people or mm. people with black ancestry. That means the black Africans and then the those of uh, black Caribbean Mm. or um, ancestry or ethnicity. I, I have read that. I mean, I, I, I've known that for a long time. Do, do we know why? Well, <clears throat> not necessarily, but I think just because of our race, you know, it has to do with genetics. Okay. And essentially, we are who we are because of our genes. So it's, research has found out that uh, most of the diseases that affect people, there's a higher incidence or prevalence among those who are blacks. Mm. And interestingly, in Ghana here, it is rightly so. And uh, when you compare Ghana <coughs> to the other developed nations, the mm. incidence of prostate cancer is low. But when it comes to the death rates or the mortality rates, it's very high in Ghana as compared to the other countries. Mm. I see. So, in other words, if you're a black man, or Caribbean or whatever, and you yeah. have your of the black race, yeah. and you're a man, you really have to take care of your higher prostate. Risk, yeah. You stand a higher risk. You stand a how, higher how, risk. Comparatively, how high is the risk? Let's say you pick a Caucasian. I mean, you could share with us if, if you do know, and a black African. How, how much higher is the risk? When it comes to the black Africans or the black race, I think it's 60%. Higher? Yeah, 60%. About 60%. Yeah, about 60%. Hey! So... Okay, so, so those are the statistics. They don't make for comfortable listening, but yeah. it is what it is. Yeah. Um, now that we know what the prostate is and the risk factor, what then, coming to nutrition, even before we look at checking ourselves and all that, yeah. maybe I should do the check. Um, at what age should a man, because I know in your teens, you don't need to be checking your prostate. Yeah. Uh, in your early 20s, you may not need to. Some say 40. Yeah, so. I started checking many years ago. Um, others, because I've also seen people in their late 20s and early 30s who supposedly have had prostate-related yeah. issues. When do we start? So around the age, between 40 to 50, so around the age of 50, but if you have a first degree relative, that is, you have a family history of uh, prostate cancer, that is to say, either your father or your brother or your son has had prostate cancer, you need to check around the age of 40, do annual checks to see if maybe you could be at an increased risk or if it's, it's good to detect it early right. so that your life can be saved because usually it presents no symptoms in the early stages mm. until the disease has spread or it's advanced. That is when it begins to show some signs and symptoms. So once you do the checks or the screening regularly, it can be detected. That is if you have the the cancer growing and you can be detected early and then you can begin the treatment as soon as possible to save your life and and here's what i'll say uh, my own uncle and good friend quick who's in team yeah uh, ksm as we call him um he he actually made mention of the fact that listen when when he had his prostate issues and i've had uh interactions with him for a stuff specifically related to the prostate. There were no signs. And that's another thing. There may, I mean, because at a certain age, enlargement and some P yeah. things are normal, yeah. okay? And that was at best what he, it took someone to persistently, so this was literally a mistake. And then he checked and found out that, oh, I'm actually 
and he had to go, you know, get surgery and, yeah. and everything that would follow. For those of you who will be watching, I'll share those interactions with you that I had with him uh, on this. But, but that's another thing. You can't just rely on, oh, maybe some, there will be symptoms. And then, yeah. because for some people, the symptoms are practically non-existent. Non -existent. Yes. So if you wait for that, you could find out at the last moment when it's things have, late, yeah. have gone totally out of, out of gear. Wow. So talking about checking the prostate, how often should we do it um, and what goes into it? So on average, you can do it once in a year. Once a year. On average. If you can afford it, maybe you can do it every six months. It's okay. fine. But on average, once a year is fine. But like I said earlier, if you have a family history of prostate cancer, then around the age of 40, you need to be doing frequent checks so okay. that if it's there, it can be detected early. Because what happens is that sometimes when it happens that you have the cancer, it doesn't just attack the prostate. It begins to spread to other parts of the body. And that's when it, it gets a bit scary because it doesn't just end at the prostate, but it can affect your kidneys, it can affect the other organs in the body as well. Because mm. the cancer cells can be very aggressive sometimes. And there are cases where people have even had the cancer and even had undergone uh, surgery or perhaps therapy, uh, chemotherapy or radiation. But you realize that the cancer still comes back. Mm. I see. Uh, so interesting stuff. But in terms of the different types of testing, I mean, I've, I've been through this. So there's the PSA and sometimes they may have to do other tests. Can you let yeah. us know about them? So one thing also is that uh, we have the malignant and the benign. So right. when you have uh, what you call prostatitis, that means inflammation of the prostate. That is not cancerous. Right. We also have what we call the BPA. That is the benign prostatic hyperplasia. That's also enlargement of the prostate. Then we have the prostate cancer itself. Mm. So if it's the cancer, then that means it's very serious. Okay. But if it's the other two that I mentioned earlier, that can be treated. Okay. So even if it's the cancer, maybe at no, a not too advanced stage, can it still be treated? Yeah, it can still be treated. Mm. Early detection is key. But, but it... So when it's late detection, that is when the fatality rate is high. Yeah, that's when the mortality rate or the fatality rate is very high. Okay. Now let's look at some myths. I, I know there are a lot of myths about the prostate. Some will tell you that, oh, if you're having frequent sex. Uh, some even go as far as talking about masturbation and all of that. We're being, yeah. having a very open yeah. conversation. And that if you do that, it will not get enlarged and all that. Is this true? Well, I would say I wouldn't even encourage masturbation. If, if you have a female partner, you can have sex, but as a man to masturbate, no. Mm. I wouldn't encourage that. Okay. So, on the moral standpoint, and Christian, you're Muslim, we have a clear standpoint yeah. on some of these things. But, for health purposes, and I've had conversations with medical doctors on yeah. this, who have pointed to the fact that the, maybe someone masturbating or engaging in frequent sex does not mean their prostate is going to be compromised. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah, it's true. It's just like cervical cancer. Some of the risk factors is if one, you started having sex at an early age, or mm. at a very tender age, it puts you at risk. But there are people who have had sex very young, but they didn't get cervical cancer. Mm. And there are some people too who didn't have sex at a younger age, but then they ended up developing cervical cancer. So it's, it's a bit, you know, it's topsy-turvy. It's not a, a clear path that if you have frequent sex or if you masturbate, then you ha you're, it puts you at risk. Or, it, or it reduces your risk. It reduces so it's neither here nor there. It's, it's it, neither here nor there. But you know how the human body works sometimes. Science is still trying to uncover that because day in day out there are more studies more research that is being done to find out how the human body functions because certain things there may be some clear signs but in the end things may not turn out with what the signs that you are seeing 
and there are some times too that there are no signs and then things just happen. So it's, 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 it's a bit dicey how the human body works. So we are still learning about the human body and mm. how, how it operates. So one thing you've said, if there's a risk factor in your family, like with diabetes, yeah, sometimes. With diabetes, yeah. Uh, if you, if the, I know someone recently who shared with me that, a uh, very young lady, that she's found out because she had a new job and she tested because it was part of the yeah, requirements. requirements. That's the only way she found out yeah, she was yeah. diabetic. And she wasn't surprised because guess what? Her I grandmother, her mother, her brother yeah. have got it. And now she has, has yeah. got it. So sometimes early detection yeah. uh, saves But lives. then with the risk factors, we have mm. the modifiable ones and then non okay. So the modifiable ones are like the family history and then the ethnicity and then your age as well because those ones are not within your control. You can't right. do anything about it. But other risk factors such as overweight or obesity, those ones are things that you can work on. And for a man, when we talk about obesity, it's a disease. Right. Just as we have diabetes, we have hypertension and the kidney disease. That means that you have excessive accumulation of fat in your body and it poses a risk to your health. Uh, when we talk about, so in assessing someone to be obese, we use either the BMI, so it's a measure, body mass of, your, index. Yeah, a measure of mm. your body weight uh, against your height. If you're, you have a BMI of above 25 kilograms per meter squared, that means between 25 and 29.9, that means you are overweight. And having a BMI greater than or equal to 30 kilograms per meter squared, that means that you are... I overweight. also know, though, that sometimes, sometimes the BMI the may BMI, not necessarily yes, be the best. Not necessarily be Someone may have more muscle than fat. More muscle, yes. So and we because don't rely of their on only the BMI. So we have the other ones that we call the waist circumference. So with the waist circumference, you just take a tape and measure around your midsection. Now for a man, if you have a waist circumference of more than 37 inches or 94 centimeters or higher, then you should be on the lookout. Or we also use what we call the waist to hip ratio. So you take uh, a measure of your waist and then take a measure of your hip and then divide it. So if the value or the figure you get is above one or that is one or higher, you should also be on the lookout for that because it puts you at risk of getting prostate diseases. Not necessarily prostate cancer, but prostate diseases. Okay, so I just want to reinforce this before we focus on the nutrition yeah. and diet. So enlargement will naturally happen after a certain age. Yes. Your prostate will start getting enlarged yeah. as, you as you grow. That one is not necessarily... It increases in size as you grow. Yes, so it's, it's, it's normal. It's normal. But you have to be checking so that if there are other abnormal things going yeah. on, then it can be detected. Yes. All right. And it doesn't also mean that once you are having some level of frequent urination, because that could also depend on that could also hormones, be, stress, so many things yeah, happening That could even you. be a sign or a symptom of having UTI. Oh, okay. Infection. Right. Yes. I mean, but I'm just saying that it could be so many things. It, it doesn't necessarily so many, mean no, no, it doesn't you have a prostate mean, issue. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about a good diet, a healthy diet, how to eat to keep your prostate healthy. What, what should you be looking at as a so, man? So we don't have a particular food or what we call a superfood, but it's an array of foods that you eat. So it's something that you should incorporate in your diet every day. It's going to be something that you do once or twice and then you stop there. No, it has to be a continuous something. There are certain nutrients that are very key to help or sort of help reduce your risk of getting prostate diseases. Either uh, the prostatitis or the BPH or the prostate cancer itself. So number one, I'm going to mention the nutrients and then the sources of food. So we have what we call the omega-3 fatty acids. Okay. Yeah. So what omega-3 fatty acids does is that they sort of increase your, your HDL, what we call the good cholesterol, and then reduce your LDL, that is the bad cholesterol. Now the omega-3 fatty acids also helps to fight inflammation. So you get omega-3 fatty acids from fatty fishes such as salmon, mackerel, sardines, anchovies and the rest but we also have people anchovies look no, i've forgotten the uh, what's the local name again is that what we call 
Is that the one mile? One man thousand. Thousand. Yeah, I okay, think. Yeah. That is those are the anchovies. Yeah, right? those are the anchovies. Okay. But then again, you have some people who may not eat fish. Mm. So you can still get those omega-3 fatty acids from your nuts and seeds. So your granite, your soya bean, your flax seeds, your chia seeds. So you work with what you have around you. If you don't have the flax seeds or the chia seeds and you have your granite, it's okay. You the the chia it. or chia seeds are the black ones, right? Yeah, very tiny. Those black, black ones. Yeah. And then the other one also has to do with fiber. And okay. Yes. What fiber does it does? It adds bulk to your, your stool. It also adds bulk to your food. It curbs your appetite so right. you don't overeat. And it also slows digestion and the slow release of sugar into the bloodstream. Okay. So Because when it's rapid, that's when it hides. Yes. You know, so, it's, it's a high... Yeah, and the fiber we are talking about could be either soluble fiber or insoluble fiber. And we get the fiber from food sources such as our whole grains, our fruits and vegetables, and then our nuts and seeds as well. And with that fiber, I'm talking about also... Um, in Ghana here, we are blessed with so many staples and cereals. So your... Rice that we spoke about the other time, talking about the brown rice, mm -hmm. you get your fiber from that. You also get your fiber from your maize, your oats, your quinoa, fonio. One interesting thing about fonio is that a lot of people do not know about it, that it even yeah. comes from Ghana or it's grown in Ghana here, but it's a very rich source of dietary fiber and other minerals as well. And I encourage people to eat that because it's also very nice. And uh, with the fiber, what it does is as compared to the refined, the fiber here, we are talking about the complex carbohydrates. But when you take the refined, simple carbohydrates, those ones, when you are eating them, can lead to weight gain in the sense that it sort of digests quickly and you'd have to eat a lot more of it to feel full. Mm. So that is why the fiber is very good. But if you are eating a diet rich in, simple refined carbohydrates, those ones will not do you a lot of good. And it, that's when it also spikes up your blood sugar. Right. So the candies, the white bread, the donuts, the cookies, the pastries, and all those things are not too healthy. Okay. Then the other one, we have the, uh, the, the lycopene. So lycopene is a very powerful antioxidant. And what antioxidants do is that they help eradicate, eradicate or remove free radicals from the body. So it's these free radicals that uh, cause oxidative stress to the human body and sort of trigger or trigger inflammation in the body and also increase the growth of cancer cells. So if you are eating foods that are rich in antioxidants, what they do is that they don't cause damage to your DNA and they help your DNA to replicate properly. Uh, properly. When your DNA does not replicate properly, properly, that is when it can lead to the oxidative stress and also put you at risk of getting cancer. So you can get the lycopene from tomatoes. You can also get the lycopene from watermelon, papaya, what you call the purple. But with the tomatoes, what happens is you have to eat the cooked tomatoes. And by cooking here, I'm not talking about putting the tomato on fire and cooking it for about an hour. Because when it comes to the, the lycopene is tightly bound to the cell walls of the tomato. And in order for the body to be able to assess the lycopene so that it can carry it to the prostate, you have to eat cooked tomatoes. So you can saute your tomatoes, it's fine. Mm. Or when you are preparing your stew, but do not leave the stew on fire. Not uh, excuse me to say, a much before you sort of take it off the fire. When it happens that way, you would have ended up destroying the nutrients in there because the water soluble vitamins do not like a lot of heat. So you cook them under low to medium heat and not for longer periods of time as well. Okay. Uh, so if, if I understand what you're, you're saying in totality, Again, it's about taking a balanced diet. Yeah, That's exactly. basically it. Yeah. From all the six food groups and yeah. all of that. Ensure you're getting good portions of, of your yeah, carbs, your vitamins, minerals, yeah. your fats and oils, and, and proteins, all those things. Yeah. And then you can keep yourself in shape. Yeah. Uh, I, 
I like granola. I like nuts and stuff like that. Yeah. They're also good for the body. Yeah. Fiber. That's in essence what you're saying. Yeah, but one thing, I would want to also clear the air on something that um, people think fats are bad, but fats are not bad. Yeah. Fats, you need some amount of fats. It's just that for every gram of fat, you get um, nine calories. So that's twice the amount of calories you would have gotten from your carbohydrates and your proteins. But you need to make sure that you are eating them in the right proportion or amount. When you take your food, 20 to 30 percent of your energy requirement should come from your fats. Mm. But we have 20 to 30 percent. 20 to 30 percent. Okay. We have different types of fats. We have the saturated fats, we have the trans fats, and then we have the unsaturated fats. So for the unsaturated, you have the monounsaturated and then the polyunsaturated fats. So you get the omega 3 from the monounsaturated and the polyunsaturated fat. Okay. But for the trans fats, you need to avoid them because they are not healthy. Mm. They undergo a process of what we call hydrogenation. So some of the vegetable oils, I don't want to mention them, but those ones yeah. are not healthy. You need right. to stay away from them. And uh, industrially processed uh, baked goods and stuff, those ones are not healthy. But you can go for the fatty fish, the avocados and all that. And then another essential nutrient or vitamin that is also an antioxidant is vitamin e or what you call selenium so basically it goes back to eating from the cis food groups because that is when you get all these nutrients i'm talking about from mm. and even as you speak of fat uh, the body itself requires some fat content like you yes. mentioned yes. to thrive yeah. sometimes your body and stores your, your body stores all. food yeah. As, as fat for yeah, that rainy exactly. day. Yeah. Uh, there's also, as you mentioned, fat, cholesterol, because there's good cholesterol and then there's, and there's bad, cholesterol. bad cholesterol. So sometimes we paint the picture that, oh, cholesterol is bad, but there's mm -hmm. good cholesterol yeah, and bad really cholesterol. cholesterol. Any final words on, yes, the prostate, but general health? Uh, yeah, and then we didn't talk about the foods to avoid. So okay, when let's, let's do that to, to conclude then. The red meat and then the processed meat. So... You can cut down on the red meat, but for the processed meat, it's a no-no. I wouldn't encourage you eating processed meat. For example, the sausages, the ham, the bacon, the canned beef and all those things, they are not healthy. And then also try to quit smoking if you are someone who smokes, because smoking is also bad for the prostate and then the lungs as well. And then... How about those who drink and smoke? I know some of them. <laughs> They drink, they smoke, they even use the E something. I'll not yeah, mention names. That. Yeah, I know what you are saying. They know themselves. Yeah, that is no good. It's no good. I think for such people, you may think they are not falling sick, but the day something happens is very serious, trust me. And mm. that's the end. That will be the end of you. Well, it's always good having you join the conversation. We're very grateful that you've come our way today as well educating us and um, trying to keep us healthy. We're yeah. grateful for your time. My final um, words also is that uh, <coughs> there are some tests that you need to do. Uh, you can just walk in any nearby health facility or hospital and request that they run those tests for you. So one is the PSA, the prostate right. spe uh, specific antigen. That's a blood test. We have other ones like the prostate biopsy. So those ones, they may take a sample of your prostate and then take it to the lab and then analyze it. Then we also have the digital rectal examination. That one is carried out by a qualified medical professional. So don't try to mm -hmm. examine your prostate yourself mm -hmm. because you may not know what to look out for. Right. So just visit a healthcare professional to attend to you. All right. Fazia Abdul Rahman is uh, well, she's a registered dietitian, and she joined us on the conversation this morning, like she did the last time. I'm hoping that we can do something else with yeah, you before... Yeah, next time we'll talk about something interesting. Before the, yeah. the, the year yeah. ends. Yeah, it's a surprise. Oh, it's a surprise, yeah, eh? It's a surprise. You have a surprise package we'll have, for us. For that one, a lot of people fall victim to it. Hey. Yes. And yeah, we look forward to that one. Uh, thank you, Fozia, for coming. Do stay with us. We'll return on the AM show as we gear up to wrap. One last thing that we have for you. We'll be right back.